Here's our specialist. Hello. I knew this was going to be a really difficult part of the job. Why do I feel I'm being trapped here? This is the moment I managed to convince Richard Hammond from the TV <laughs> to help me fix my wrecked McLaren 720S. And McLaren said it's not fixable because of this. After buying the car from Amsterdam, I drove it straight to a McLaren repair specialist who told me McLaren wouldn't allow them to fix the carbon tub. Wouldn't be allowed to now. This is because it's made out of all one weave and a repairing it that size would cause it to be unsafe in an accident. So I had to buy a whole new one. Well, half of one. I managed to find a second hand tub for just five and a half thousand pounds. All that's left for me to do now is switch over the good parts from my old tub onto my new tub, which is easier said than done. Right, to transfer everything of this shell onto that shell. We can't just do it one bit by one bit. We've got to literally take apart this whole car before we put a single piece on that shell, just because the wiring loom, which is all down here, runs up right underneath the car. So we could start putting this part on and then have to take it all off again to put a wire in or something. So I, I think the best place for us to even start and get going is just start stripping down this full interior so we can access the wiring loom. And I think what McLaren would probably do when they build the car is put the wiring loom in first. Maybe. But that's what we're gonna try. So out comes each and every single bit of trim from the McLaren, including weird sensors. Oh, oh, there's actually not as much as I thought. So look, there's a, ho there's a hose on that, hose on that. And then there's a hose which goes through this tube down and then onto the... Is this to make induction noise in the car? That's the only thing we thought these weird parts were for. Maybe one of you guys know. Next step, we're moving on to the center console. I think once we get this out, we should be able to get the dashboard out as well. This is our first time ever working on a McLaren. And it's quite interesting. Look at this. This is how easy a McLaren dismantles. <laughs> Me and my dad are still chipping away at dismantling the dashboard and loads of other parts which make up the interior. One carpet. Finally, the center console was loose enough to remove. Then it's time for the dashboard. Just so this is noted, this is my side now. I'm happy that this is my side. I think we should be able to lift out the dashboard by undoing these two bolts on my side, the two other bolts on my dad's side, and then undoing the bolt which holds the steering column to the steering rack. The rack goes down here and it's gonna be connected to the steering rack. So if I go underneath it, this bolt right here should disconnect the steering rack from the steering column. If this actually works, it could save us a lot of time. That means we'll be lifting out the dashboard with the steering wheel connected and all of the trims and electrical connectors on it as well. There's a few plugs left to undo and the dash was actually moving. And once we pulled it away, we realized there was even more plugs to disconnect. So then it was just about out. Oh my God, it's however, it's, yeah. You got it or not? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me wing mirror. I oh. need that. Watch me oh. wing mirror. No! Oh. No, I watched the car with mirror. <laughs> Not the mirror. <laughs> you happy that's out now? Yeah. Let's crack on. So the good news is that the dashboard is out. But the bad news is that we still can't remove the wiring loom because it's running all the way from the back of the car straight through to the front here. I'm starting to question more and more how this is actually gonna go back together. <laughs> I'm now gonna try and remove this heater box, which is pretty much the last thing inside the car. It has two coolant hoses going to it, which means I have to access them from the front of the car, undo the clips, and then pull them away from the heater box. And now we should be able to go back in and remove it. Once that's done, I'm just gonna start dismantling the whole front of the car. Starting off with the brake master cylinder and anything else which has electrical connections to it. Well, lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is so time consuming. There won't be a single nut or bolt that I haven't touched on this McLaren by the time it all goes back together. Literally the biggest job I've ever taken on. Next off is the under tray because now I'm trying to take off the front bumper 
which will just give me a little bit more access to everything else. One, no, one wing. Surely that can't be expensive because there's not much to it. I'm really questioning my sanity right now. Uh, this, all of this, all, all of these plugs are disconnected. And this is the top bloom. If you have a look through here, I should be able to all push this through. Oh my God, if I actually can do this now, I'm gonna be so buzzing. Is this the last one? This is the last one. Come on. <laughs> yeah. One loom, another loom to go. Because, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so close now to getting out the rest of the wiring loom. But this lower wiring loom goes to all the connections on the suspension and on the wheel hub. So my logical idea was to disconnect all the plugs and then try and remove the front subframe with all the suspension and everything connected to it. That way it's less work when connecting it all back up onto the other shell. So now I'm undoing all the bolts which connect the subframe to the shell and the wishbones which are bolted to the frame of the car as well. And there shouldn't be much else connecting the front subframe to the car. Only the brake lines here. And then me and my dad can lower the front subframe onto a pair of jacks. This should give us a lot more access. It's like the Porsche, it's like the Porsche subframe. Front subframe is out. All the suspension is out. The steel wiring loom attached to the car, which we've got to get through the hole. And the main goal was to get this heater box out. It's still not out. I feel sorry for anyone who's got a McLaren that may need to take this heater box out at some point because uh, good luck to you. There's a lot of things you've got to take off. Whilst I'm under the car, I might as well take off this under tray. And now I can see the pipes run into the heater box. And these are held in with a bolt, which is right underneath in one of the most difficult places to get to ever. But with the subframe off, it's a little easy to get to. And once I'd loosen that bolt off, I should be able to pull the heater box away from the car. I now can get to all of the lower wiring loom and disconnect it from the mounting points and push it through the hole to go back inside of the tub. And hopefully after that, it should be it. No more wires left in the front. Great news, bad news, they're all in the car. And even worse news, all these wires, all this whole loom is all going to the back frame there, which means I've got to unplug and move every single bit of loom off this back frame now and thread it back through into the car. Then we can finally get on the tub. Maybe. So it's just the wiring loom at the back now to go through into the tub. And luckily, it didn't take long for us to do this. I think now we should start work on the new tub. So the lads are here from Screensaver to remove the screen out of the new tub because we think it's going to be a lot easier to get the dashboard in and everything with the screen out and this screen's damaged anyway but this is literally the extreme of car rebuilding now and can you imagine if you bought this car not knowing that it's gone through all of this trauma i think you'd be pretty annoyed but luckily we have car vertical for that with car vertical you're able to see the history of a car just by a click of a button once you put in your registration or VIN number, you'll get a check which looks like this. Everything's looking good for this Mercedes E-Class, apart from there's an amber light showing that there's been damage on it. 
And on this check, it's even shown me the photos of when the car was auctioned off at the car crash auction website. I can see a mileage graph here. I can see the car wasn't stolen at any point. And I can also see a full timeline of the car, including when it was damaged. And it looks like Kevin's found some hidden history of the McLaren. Oh, there's like a nest in there. Oh my God, there is. There's a nest in there. <laughs> and just like Kevin sniffed out a nest in the McLaren tub, Car Vertical can sniff out any dodgy history of your car. So to check your car out, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below. Use code MATT for discount on the check and thank me later when you find some hidden history about the car you're about to buy. Cheers, Car Vertical. This is how they do it at the factory. They take the McLaren harness and scoop it into a McLaren box. <laughs> that is literally it. This is the start. <laughs> Where do you start? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to put that plastic tunnel in. Then we're going to get going. Okay. Hit the music. This is it literally rebuilding a McLaren. But I'm pretty sure when the McLaren guys do this on the production line, there's loads of people involved. But not this time, it's just me, Matt the cameraman, and my dad. None of which have ever worked on a McLaren before. So I imagine it's gonna be pretty difficult. But then, I had to make a decision. Right, what's the decision we've got to make? Okay. I've already been told it's two against one. <laughs> when I said it was one person, and a cameraman against one, oh, so... Right. so half a person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is my decision. Um, I'm going to put the rear frame on, okay? Okay. But, but, if I put the rear frame on, then I have to take it off because of the fuel tank. Whoa! Because of the fuel tank. So what do you think? Do you have to drop the rear frame to put the fuel tank on? Or can I put the fuel tank in with the frame on? Fuel tank, I think, will slot out. It looks a bit close here. I think I think you should take the tank out. What first? I don't think you can get that out without taking the tank yeah, out. Yeah, I don't think you should put the frame on. So you think I've got it? Or you've got to take the frame off and then get your tank out. The issue we have is I wanted to put the new frame onto the new tub. But if I put that on, then find out I can't put the oil tank in or the fuel tank in, I'm going to have to take it straight back off again. Look at this. So this is a filler neck, and inside here is Dutch fuel. We're gonna, I think we're just gonna, this is a full tank, so we're gonna have to suck all this fuel out. Then the fuel tank will be lighter, so we can try and remove it. Winner. Matt, Matt, no, no. <laughs> Quick, quick, quick. Matt, that's fuel. <laughs> yeah. You need to get, you need to get a container for there. Why? Because it's fire, it's gonna set on fire, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm siphoning out the fuel, which was a full tank, into all the containers we have inside the workshop. This will make the fuel tank lighter, so it can hopefully lift it away from the frame. And if I can get this fuel tank off with the frame on, it means I can put the new frame onto the new tub, because that way I know I can lift the petrol tank in afterwards, if that makes sense. And the good news is, it looks like the fuel tank is coming away from the car without removing the rear frame. Looking good. Yeah. Fuel! Fuel! One fuel tank. Um. With the fuel tank removed, I can now confidently install the new rear frame to the new tub. The new rear frame was £2,000. So at the minute, with the McLaren being £60,000 and the new tub and frame totaling £7,500, it's still turning out to be a pretty cheap McLaren 720S. But we've still got a long way to go. And with the rear frame bolted on, I can now start fitting all of the wiring in the car. And it was easier than I thought. You can see here, a lot of it's marked in colours. The green tag on the wire going to the green tag on the ground strap, the yellow on the yellow part, and so on. And luckily, because I'd only just removed all of this, it was fresh in my mind. But the longer I leave it, the more I'll forget where it went. So I want to do this as quick as I can. 
Now I'm threading two parts of the loom into the back of the car, but this part on the rear shelf is looking complete. This is good, I feel like I've accomplished something. Now we go to the back. There's only one way this wiring loom can root in the engine bay. And if I get it wrong, it could mean that some of the connectors won't reach to the places they're meant to go to. I don't know whether I'm getting instant red flags from this. This could be a warning, but I'm not too sure. Just, uh, so the wiring I've kind of put in as far as here, because I'm not sure where any of that goes. But the ground for this wire is here on this frame. But on this frame, it was there. Now I know it's only a slight difference and it still reaches on that one, but is there a slight difference on here gonna end up being a big difference somewhere else? Another thing, it's just this one on this frame, I have in this location, and on this frame, it's slightly different in this location. It might mean nothing, I don't know, but I'm just saying it might be a red flag because there could be bigger things down the line, hopefully not. For now, I actually think I can start building this up, maybe in the goal to get the engine in this. I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe that's a strange call. Progress is good so far. And this big red thing here is the huge wire which leads from the battery all the way back to the starter motor and the alternator. This is the part that the pyro fuse cuts the power to if there's an accident. And this is just literally stuck to the bottom of the tub. And it looks like it's the first thing that McLaren install. After that, it's all of these coolant and aircon lines. And they only go in one way. And this was a pretty difficult job to do in a small scissor ramp. So difficult, in fact, I needed another plan. This is absolutely carnage, trying to do all this in this scissor ramp. So my plan, I'm gonna pick this one up, put it in the two posts and take this one out, and put this one in the scissor lift. Okay, finally, I think I've got all these in the right position. This is holding on for dear life now, the, uh, the strap for the starter motor and the alternator. And all these pipes are, I think, in the right place. But we won't know until we put everything else on. And if I put everything else on and find out they're in the wrong place, there's not much I can do about it. But they are going all the way down to the front now and out of here. So that's good. Next thing to go in is the oil tank for the oil, which sits just about here. And then we're actually making some decent progress. So I think oil tank next. Yeah, oil tank next. We are actually getting somewhere now. And it feels so satisfying to actually start putting together a car rather than taking it apart. I think this could be done in no time. Kind of. Oil tank is in. The next thing to go in is the petrol the petrol tank. And then we can literally put the engine in, but the next job requires a specialist and something that I can't do. So we're literally gonna have to take this out and put it on a trailer and take it to the specialist to do, because it's a really important job. <laughs> <laughs> the McLaren got a fair bit of attention on the back of a trailer. And it doesn't surprise me. There's not much of it there. But maybe they haven't come to see the McLaren. More so, our specialist. Here's our specialist. Hello. I knew this was going to be a really difficult part of the Why job. Why do I feel I'm being trapped here? No, <laughs> it's, it's really difficult. And I had to bring the car all the way to you for this. To uh, get this special work done. Yeah, I've done as much as I can. And I just need this little pick putting on for the next part of the build. Wait, you've gone through the car already for the film, I know. So yeah. You already know what he's on about. Just yeah. talk me through where you got to and what you did. So, I will show you it. So, what is it? <laughs> it was a McLaren 720S. Yeah. It's, it's not now though, is it? it it's going to be. It's so... Good lord! <laughs> so... <laughs> Wait, there's not much of it, is there? <laughs> well, no. Oh, you like a challenge. Uh, so, I've... Put all the wiring loom in. Lovely. We have a small I issue. Hate wiring into dark. Oh, don't even talk to me about it. It's it's just it's it's belief. It's, wiring is the plastering of car work. Oh yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Somebody could do it. They're like, see, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's to normal people. 
We have a small issue with it, is that my tub was a left-hand drive tub, and this is a right-hand drive tub. So the <laughs> holes here are different. Nice. So we'll get to that because I don't really know what we're going to do about that. So I've kind of left that for later. Yeah, cover it behind a load of stuff. Yeah, you can't see. The, got the flux capacitor in. That's yeah, the nice. flux capacitor is there, yeah. and um, yeah, all the voltage. Uh, surgings and uh, these yeah, things. Ahead. Sound convinced when you say it, and it'll work. <laughs> um, yeah. The yeah, the fuse board is there. Yeah, you got the blue wires in. That's good. Yeah, yeah, and the red wires. Yeah, as well. that's nice. That's good. That's good. Well, the rear frame is all uh, yes. brand new second hand as well because the other one was all bent to one side. Where do you find the brand new second hand sub rear subframe for a 720? Um, so, one, a scrapyard, and two, this one's off a race car and uh, five and a half thousand pounds uh, for this. It's not registered on the road. This little, this little lad here, how old's it going to be when it's done? <laughs> yeah. how, 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 old, how old are you now, mate? He is five. Five. So <laughs> you'll be able to drive it yes. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. it's finished it. I, I think so. The main bit we needed, the really difficult bit I was going to struggle with is... Uh, you want some real expertise? Yes, yeah? yeah, so yeah. it just sits right here. And yeah. um, where's Hannah gone? So this is the uh, engine cover. Oh, For some reason, we've got no a black engine. pen. <laughs> yeah. No engine. There's no engine at all. <laughs> Just sign it. Just sign, sign it. Sign, yeah, just sign it. We won't talk about it. If we sign the black car part with a black pen. See, my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No right. offence. But... I've got absolutely rinsed here. And <laughs> yeah, right. So you want me to sign this? That would be amazing. Now to have Richard Hammond be a part of this build, even if it's only small is an absolute dream come true. Something that I never thought would ever happen. It still doesn't feel real now. I, I don't know where the back two bolts are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they are. There's two, there's two left. I look, honestly thought you Look were how good. long they are. I thought you were good at this. He wants me to put the engine cover. He hasn't even noticed there's no engine. <laughs> right, uh, so lefty loosey, righty tighty. The specialist repair. And out on the back of a truck. Exactly what torque do you want this up to? Uh, ju just till it clicks. Click. There it is. There it is. Uh, click. There you go. There we that are. is perfect. At least torque. you know how the professionals do it. That's the best built bit of that car. <laughs> That's claimed by yourself. When everything else but that falls off. There you go. Thanks so Thank much. I'll make good luck with this. I'll and bring. I'll bring it back when we get to the seriously, engine. Seriously, time span. What do you think? I think by Christmas we'll be on the road. Christmas when? This year. No way! <laughs> well, <laughs> you said a day, there's not a chance. Well, I'll be delivering your presents in this. A 100%. A, it's not a kit car. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Seriously, you think Christmas? I think Christmas, I think Christmas will be on the road. Uh, 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 if last night, gonna... if last night went well, I would have got a lot further than this. Christmas on the road with this. Deal. Uh, we are uh, all right. Well, we are all witness to this by Christmas, <laughs> mate. I really hope so, and I'm desperate to see it. Good luck with it. We'll bring it here when it's done. All right. See you at Christmas. Good luck, my friend. Wish him luck, as he said. <laughs> <laughs> How cool was that? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.